Good morning. Uh, my name is Mary Jo Arnoldi, and I'm the Curator of African Ethnology and Arts in the Department of Anthropology. And I joined the museum in 1984. Today I'd like to present a brief overview of recent research on local knowledge and the building arts in the historic city of Jenny Mali. This research is part of the Anthropology Department's commitment to the investigation of indigenous knowledge systems and of the processes of changes within societies around the world today. The city of Jenne, to give you a little bit of background, was founded in the 13th century and is located in the heart of Mali's inland Niger Delta at the confluence of two rivers, the Niger and the Bani River. Until the early 20th century, Jenny was a bustling center for trade, a center for Islamic learning, and a home to a variety of craft specializations, including masonry. In 1988, the historic city of Jenny and its adjacent archaeological sites were declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is the city's uh, historic, spectacular earthen mosque, and it's over 200 multi-storied mud brick houses that have contributed to the city's current global fame. While Jenny's monumental architecture has been the focus of much of the international community's attention, it is its professional masons who build and maintain these buildings and who hold the key to the con continuity of this earthen architectural form. The project Becoming a Master Mason in Jenny Today was undertaken in collaboration with my colleague, Professor Trevor Marchand from the Department of Anthropology in the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London. Our current research is an extension of his earlier research in the 1990s on the building trades of Jenny. In this research, we were interested in exploring further the ways that knowledge and building skills have been passed down from one generation to the next through the master-apprentice system. We also wanted to identify and understand the changes that are currently taking place in the building trades in the city from the point of view of Masons themselves. We had originally scheduled our research in Jenny during December of 2011 at the beginning of the traditional building season. However, in late November, an armed insurrection in the north of Mali escalated and the security situation in the country rapidly deteriorated. So we had to rethink our research plan and we opted to bring the Masons to us. Our colleagues at the Museum for Volkerkunde in Leiden in the Netherlands offered to host our project and we invited five Masons to join us in Leiden. The Masons we work with, and here you see the five Masons, range in age from 80 years old to 20 years old, and their age differences and their different work experiences and education offer diverse and sometimes competing commentary. The interviews we conducted were rich and nuanced, and in analyzing them, we concluded that conducting the interviews in Leiden rather than in Jenne had actually provided the Masons with time outside the pressures of their daily lives, in fact, a more neutral space, for them to reflect on their profession with an eye to both the future sustainability of their practices and the changes and transformations that are currently underway. The topics that we explored in the interviews included, one, the ways that each of these men found their way into masonry, two, the positive and negative impacts that formal schooling and new media, such as mobile phones and the internet, are having on the craft profession, and third, the body of knowledge, both practical building skills and secret benedictions that are handed down from master to apprentice and how this transmission process is being affected by pressures towards privatization, the ethos of individualism, and rising competition. Taken together, the Mason's responses establish the context for a better understanding of the ways that social and working relationships are changing between members of the Mason's professional association or guild and between generations. While the results of the research will be presented in papers at scholarly conferences and published in academic journals, we also wanted to make it more widely available. Selections from the interviews were edited into four short films, and these films are the centerpiece of an exhibit currently on view in the focus gallery of the African Voices Permanent Exhibition here at NMNH, and I invite you all to visit the exhibit. The films are also available on the museum's website and on YouTube. 
Becoming a master mason in Jenny today documents, in the mason's own words, the recent shifts in professional practices and in the broader social economy that sustains the building trades in town. We gained many insights into the Masons practices as well as into their current pressures, economic, social, and political at the local, national, and international level that are affecting this profession. Yet many questions remain. While the identities of the five Masons we interviewed across three generations are still firmly grounded in a shared ethnicity and in an investment in a collective history of Masonry, we wonder, will increasing privatization, economic pressures, and globalization result in decoupling Jenny's Masons from their collective roots of their profession? And if so, how will this affect the Mason's sense of their own identity as craft specialists? And what, if any, will be the impact of these changes on the continuity of Jenny's building arts themselves? Thank you. Uh, the question was, has the film been shown within Jenny and what the reactions have been? Uh, I was in Mali in January and I showed the films in Bamako and then I gave a copy to the young man who uh, is the head of the cultural uh, uh, Maison, Maison de Culture uh, in uh, Jenny and he showed the films to young people with the Masons there. He emailed me. It's a wonderful new thing about being able to stay in contact with people. But the interesting thing was all the young people had a lot of questions to ask the Masons themselves. So that was one of the wonderful outcomes of, of this project. Thank you.